Dear brothers and sisters, certainly all praise belongs to Allah. And so we praise him, we seek his assistance, we seek his forgiveness, and we seek his protection from the evil within our own selves, from the negative consequences of our own actions. We recognize that whomever Allah guides will not go astray, and whomever he doesn't guide, whomever he leaves straying, will find no other guidance. We bear witness that there is nothing worthy of our worship except for Allah, alone, without any partners. And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger, is his servant, and is, is his slave. Allah reminds us in his book, he says, O oh, you who have accepted faith, be mindful of Allah as is his right and do not die except as Muslims. He says, O oh, you who have accepted faith, be mindful of Allah and speak a word to the truth. He will rectify for you your affairs. He will forgive for you your actions. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved tremendous success. My dua is that of Musa alayhi salam, O my Lord, expand for me my chest, make easy for me my task, loosen the knot from my tongue so they understand my speech. Amin, Ya Allah, Amin.
Today I wanted to start off looking at uh, Surah 67, Surah al Mulk. Mainly just the first two ayat in this uh, beautiful surah, Allah begins, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim, Tabarak al-ladhi biyadi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ صَدَقُ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah says what can be translated as Blessed is the one in whose hands rests all authority and he is most capable of everything he is the one who created death in life in order to test which of you is best in these. And he is the Almighty, the all forgiving. A lot of spoken the truth. There's a lot in these two ayats. I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit out of this to set up the second part of the footprint, inshallah. In this what I wanted to highlight is a few things. One is a lot is pointing to his infinite, his limitless power. The dominion, the mulk is in his hands. He has control and he states explicitly, ala kulli shayin qadir. He has power and control over what? Everything. Everything. And so we understand this until it's time to apply it and then we seem to forget, oh, how, what's going on? Everything's out of control. No, it's out of your control. But it was always out of your control. Law doesn't say you have things in your control. He says everything is in his control. That is static. It stays that way. There's no exceptions to that. He also continues indicating that he's the one who created death and life. And he mentions death here first. Wake us up to the fact that what's in front of us is the death. He created that. He made that a reality that all of us must experience. He made this living that we have, this life that we have, a reality that all of us must experience. And he gives a succinct purpose here. It's to test you all. Which of you will be best in deeds? Which of you are going to be best in deeds? Knowing that Allah is the one who has control over everything. In his hands is everything. He created you specifically to go into this world that he has fashioned, that he has evolved, that he has sustained, and he has determined its parameters. He's put us here to see which one of us will be best, most excellent in our deeds? And so I'm here to remind us of this reality. And so if I was to ask you, so what excellent deeds have you done today? What tests have Allah, has Allah given you today? And what excellent deeds have you done in response? When I ask my children this question, what, how has Allah tested you today? What excellent deeds have you done? They're like, hmm. I haven't really been tested today. I was like, that's amazing. Allah did not test you today? Wow. So sometimes we don't even realize a test. We think a test is something really dramatic that happened to you today. No. You woke up today, didn't you? Allah woke you up. That was an event. Right? Not everybody wakes up. Allah woke you up today. How did you respond to that amazing event? Are you grateful? Do you recognize this is a blessing of Allah? Did you wake up in time to pray your pleasure prayer? Did you get it in? We're always being tested, brothers and sisters. Our life and our death. So if you're living or dying or dead, Allah's test is on you. What is your response supposed to be? And what is the most excellent response you can muster in any given situation? This is 
our challenge as human beings, but as Muslims, we have this knowledge. And we have the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He woke up in the morning with a dua. He didn't just wake up and say, ah, nothing special. Wake up every day. He woke up with a dua, thanking his Lord for reviving him. And he set about and charted on his course throughout his day, being mindful of Allah every step of the way. That is the excellent pattern that we are given to follow. And so we should reflect on this with our own selves as we move through the day, as we interact with our family and our household. We're being tried. We need to scoot up some, we're filling up. We can go ahead and scoot up some. Allah is testing us every day when you're in the company of other people. How are you to these people? He's testing us every day because he's given us something. He is powerful. He is amazing. He is awesome. He is worthy of all praise. He details for us in his book all of these different attributes that he has. And we know of these attributes, we can confirm of these attributes because they're manifest, they show themselves in his creation. And this is also part of Surah al -Muk. Allah says, look at the skies and how they've been constructed. You, don't, you won't see a flaw. He says, look at the bird that's flying over you. That's only a Rahman that makes that possible. His mercy, his power is manifest all over his creation and through his creation. And that means you and I, brothers and sisters, we're his creation. We are his creation. We have the means by which to show Allah's greatness by how we act. When we show mercy, that's only from him. So who's showing mercy? When we have power, but we deal with that power in a fair and just way, and we're not oppressive, that's from Allah. So who's being mindful of how they deal with their power? Whether it's over their spouse, over their children, over their employees, over a random stranger, you have power over them. Are you fair? Are you just? Are you taking advantage? You're being tested. At all these moments, who is going to have the most excellent response? Brothers and sisters, we should see this as we're moving through our day as opportunities. Sometimes the word test, we think of just the negative component of the test. The positive opportunity, or the positive component of the test is this is an opportunity for you to show what you're made of. This is an opportunity for you to show what's inside of you and bring it out to the surface. Now everybody knows. This brother's patient. This brother's merciful. This brother has wisdom. This person is compassionate. So brothers and sisters, my reminder for you begins with the reflection of our own behaviors as we respond to life, as we respond to living on a regular daily basis, knowing that Allah wants to see and he wants us to showcase what we're made of. And before we get overwhelmed with it, he reminds us he is Al-Aziz, the Almighty, the one who set up this scenario in the first place and put us all in it. But he's also al Ghafur. He's forgiving. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to get it right. That's not even the point. Your ability to recognize that you've messed up or that you're not getting it right and to stop and to reflect and to feel bad about that and to turn to him seeking forgiveness is part of being excellent in your deeds. So may Allah grant us the strength that we need and the courage that we need 
to exhibit excellent deeds throughout our day, every day that he gives us. Amen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. We have a, a program here on Sunday at 2 p.m. in the Masjid. Sister, many of our community knows her. Sister Latifa Hameen is going to give a presentation, really a, a webinar on what she calls ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And I know a little something about adverse childhood experiences. And I think practically everyone in here has some stories they can tell. Really what we're talking about in this scenario is trauma. I would like for everyone who's able, particularly if you're a member of Masjid al-Islam and you don't have anything already scheduled at 2 p.m. on Sunday, to be here for that discussion. We need it as a community. And don't worry. Uh, I'm in communication with other imams from all across the North Texas. All of our communities need this. Trauma is when you have a disturbing or distressing experience. And it could be like a single event, or it could be something that's ongoing. And in our cases, we probably have examples of both. And the thing about trauma is that if it's not resolved in a positive way, if it's not resolved in a healthy way, then its negative impact lingers on, it stays with you. It affects how you think, it affects how you feel, it affects how you interact with people consciously and subconsciously. You might hear someone say, oh, I don't trust anybody. Well, that's not normal. That's not healthy attitude. Something happened that has hurt you really bad. You haven't resolved. If your position now is, I won't trust anybody. I get that. But that's an example of a trauma. And many of us are moving through lives with traumas that began when we were children. And we never healthy and figured out a healthy response to that trauma or we buried it somewhere we don't talk about it we're just a certain way now and that impacts us today if you were like me and you grew up Muslim in America there's trauma associated with that because you go into public schools 99% of the time only like 1 or 2% of Muslims grow up going to private Muslim schools. So you're more than likely going to a public school with kids that don't know anything about Islam except for negative stuff. Terrorists, barbaric, primitive, inferior faith, y'all don't believe in Jesus, all this stuff. And so they automatically are going to see you as the Muslim as lesser than. That's a chronic experience that you have to deal with every time someone finds out, oh, you're Muslim. Oh, man. But even before I had fully embraced, for me, my Muslim identity, what's being imposed on me by society is my identity as a black person. So even growing up being the only black kid in a school or in a grade level or in a class has its own trauma because children don't understand or appreciate differences in diversity like we think. And so that usually means bullying, picking on, or you know, rude jokes, things of this nature. Trauma. If you were, if you didn't grow up in this country, maybe you came from a different country, that's a trauma because now you're from a different culture. So now your name is automatically weird and you're dressed, and oh, you're Muslim on top of that. If you were American and you converted to Islam, 
There's trauma associated with that. Now your family's looking at you like, what's going on with you? It's really for the vast majority of us, I would say every single one of us, it's inescapable that you're dealing with some level of personal trauma. And these are generic things, things that fall into the category of being abuse, neglect, dysfunctional households. It could be a cultural norm that's actually cruel, but this is normal in my culture. Oh, and don't let it be associated with Islam because I come from a predominantly Islamic culture. So now this cultural practice is being labeled as this is what Islam is. That's traumatizing. If we don't resolve these traumas, we have one-fourth, according to the best data that's available, a fourth of adult Muslims in America. I shouldn't say adult Muslims. A fourth of adults who grew up as Muslims, they don't identify as Muslim. One fourth of adults that grew up in America as Muslims are not identifying as Muslim. Part of the reason I would suggest is there's trauma involved in that. And if you don't know how to handle it, it's easy to say, ah. That's not for me. This is why it's important for us to recognize what the trauma is, what's the root cause of it, and how do we get to that trauma? How do we get to a healing for it? Our community as Muslims, whether we're African Americans and having to deal with the trauma of racism or immigrants and having to deal with that trauma or just Muslim, as a community, I think we should recognize and embrace first, we, are, we have been deeply traumatized. That's not a negative thing. It's negative when you don't respond to it in the best way, as Allah says in Surah al -Mu. Who is gonna have the best actions? So here's the situation, here's the condition, here's the circumstance. Here's what's happened to you. It's not your fault if your parents were mean, if they neglected you. It's not your fault if you got called all sorts of names growing up and that made you a certain way. That's not your fault. That's traumatizing. How do you respond and how do you do it? As Muslims, we have to understand that Allah holds us all responsible in the day of judgment for who we are. These traumatic experiences are shaping us. That's why it's important for us to be like, hold on, wait a second. No, 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 I'm not going to let this thing just make me into the, a type of person. We have a responsibility to intervene and recognize I've been traumatized. I need to do something about it. I need to respond to that in a certain way. It's up to us to seek out and receive a rectification to fix that. The, one of the definitions when we talk about being righteous, being solid, it's a verb in its root. It means to fix or to correct, to make things right. Even referred to as islah. We have to start that with our own selves. If we are experiencing some form of brokenness, if you will, it's going to impact how we are as spouses, parents, parents, parents in particular. And the reason why I harp on parents is because in our communities, trauma becomes intergenerational. We're traumatized. We didn't do anything about it. Then we traumatize our children. And then they grow up, they don't do anything about it, they traumatize their children. And so, just speaking on the African American, many of us are dealing with traumas that go back generations. Because no one ever knew 
to do anything about it. Just that's the way it is. When I messed up as a kid, I got beat really bad. So when my kid messed up, guess what? I'm going to beat him really bad. That's what, you, that's what you do. That's the traumatized way of thinking about it. The untraumatized way, a Muslim goes and says, how did Rasulullah deal with children? Where's the story of how he beat that kid really bad? It doesn't exist. Where's the story of how he taught his wife a lesson by beating her down? It doesn't exist. Or maybe he verbally abused her because she didn't understand her place. It doesn't exist. The healthy approach, we have a beautiful example in the message of Allah Sallallahu In every facet of his life, for the entire world, until the world is no longer here. Allah gave us that example. So if we're not measuring ourselves against that, if we're measuring against some other cultural standard which is tainted, that's already a traumatic way of thinking. So my challenge for us today is to wake up, to stand up, and to stop the cycle of abuse, to stop the, the cycle of continuing this, this phrase of hurt people, hurt people. Since I'm hurt, I'm going to make somebody else feel it. And it's consciously or subconsciously. We have an obligation to be aware of what's going on with us, and then we have an obligation to fix it. And so may Allah grant us the courage to look at ourselves. May Allah grant us the wisdom to see in ourselves what needs to be rectified. And may Allah grant us a pathway and guide us to a pathway to rectify our own selves, to resolve whatever traumas are still impacting us negatively, to make us better human beings, to purify us, purify our hearts, purify our minds, purify our actions. So we can be better spouses, and we can be better parents, and we can be better neighbors, and we can be better brothers and sisters to each other. To, to each other. In Allah wa malaika fa yasalun ala nabi. Ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وحمد الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر